Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. Now, apologies for last week, but I can't control the weather. I think this week we can quite say that we've had a monsoon. It has rained every day. Even last night it was torrential rain. Now, what I did, I kept nipping down between showers and doing a bit of the planting and getting the, the frames, etc., ready for planting and a little bit of planting. But every time I had to come back up and dry out, have a shower and then get ready for nipping down again after the next shower. So today we've actually come into the greenhouse to start with. As I say, it's terribly wet, but I'll show you that when we get down there. I'm going to plant those two tubs that I promised you last week. And then as it dries out a little bit, we'll have a day where we fill all the tubs. That's the best way to do it. The baskets are coming on nicely that we did with you, look. They're settling down nicely, but I can't put them out because of the high winds and the hail. They'll just smash them to pieces. So I'm afraid they'll have to stop in here for a little while. Now the tubs I'm going to do are these. We've had them quite a while now. I think originally they were brown with like gold straps on them, but that's long since gone. But they're still a very good container for planting. It's nice and wide. We put these each side of the boot room in the courtyard door and they look very nice. So let's get them planted. This is the colours we're going to use. You know who's picked the colours. So uh, we'll get on with it. I'm going to put this fuchsia at the bank. It's still a little bit twiggy, but the twigs are green, so I don't want to cut them off just yet. They might just start growing again. And then some geraniums in there, some ivy leaf geraniums. That one's a nice pelagonium, look nice and red, a lovely colour. And then some impatiens and begonias. And we'll see how we go. It's just normal potting compost I'm afraid we get what we get now and it's it's very lumpy but for the planters it's fine it says it's got six weeks feed in it but we'll be feeding these after three or four weeks anyway let's get that fuchsia in we'll dig a good hole I have put some crops on the drainage holes in the bottom obviously we just need to get that drain and we'll take it down this is one we've overwintered again there you are it's overwintered in that sand it was potted into this what was it two and a half litre pot and as you can see it's really come on well that's no problem and overwintering them gives you this nice strong plant to start with. We just push the compost around with quite a few plants to put in. And so we have a look to make sure it's have a look to make sure it's right way round. I want it like that nice and hollow there. You'll see why in a moment when we put the geraniums in. Let's pop these in, there's three of these to go. Very pretty. Normally we'd take that off, but we're leaving it on for showing. Again, these are overwintered. Can you see how that's come on beautifully, look? Very pleased with the overwintering. You must overwinter your geraniums. I think we'll have this one in the centre because we've got a red and a pink to follow. So, like that I think. Fills that gap up nicely. We'll have the pink if I can get it. 
this is one that we've got from the supermarket I think but we like the pink so we couldn't walk past it we had to buy it so this one's not an overwintered one but nice plant and we'll pop it in there remember this one would be it'll have a wall at the back so we need to make sure we've got sides on it so this colour there and this one this is one of my overwintered ones I do love red geraniums I think if, if it was my choice the whole thing would be red but Diane does it better than me this is overwintered cutting done rather well there are a lot of these roots of it at the bottom, that's fine. We'll just make a nice hole for that one. There you go. That looks nice. Looks quite nice already. Now we've got three of the ivy leaf that we've I think this is one we bought, isn't it, in this pot? This is uh, another one that we've bought supermarket again but we saw we like the colour so we bought it and if you imagine when it's grown quite big I'll have to take that off now broke it when it goes quite big this year we'll have some cuttings for the winter and then we'll have that colour for overwintering that'll be fine now this one is going right back here but sort of facing the front look like that remember there's a wall at the back but not at the sides and then this is a pretty one this is an overwintered one that you can see it's got my compost in very well rooted a bit on the dry side but these are not too bad this side is open to the courtyard so we'll do exactly the same now and face it so it's nicely out remember to keep packing the compost around them no good we air holes around them and they and then let's put one in the front which and we'll have this one it's got sticks in that this is another one that we saw at the I think this was a garden scent it was and it's a double so we did like the pink double so this one will go in the front I'll just clean around the bottom you know like we clean the bottoms out so it's not all congested same as we did with the hanging baskets you see how I've taken all this off just to let the so these leaves won't just rot and then make the whole rot thing rotten so there you go nice plant in there and we'll have that one just like that that's going to look pretty right let's have a look see what we've got and i think we'll have two begonias in there and some impatience at the front. So impatience tend to spill over the edge more than begonias. Impatience and the begonias and the bacupa, which will grow right through everything. We'll put those in last. Now, impatience, we'll pop there for a moment. Begonias. They'll be not quite rooted, but they are rooting and they're going in one on each side of the front like that they look a bit low at the moment but believe me they won't be long before they're up here and then a white for that side same again it'll only just be rooted down but it is rooted there's some very young plants we bought I don't have room to grow them from seeds so we bought little tiny plants and we potted them on 
because of the cold and wet weather just to hold them the uh, impatience will be the same we just couldn't hold them so you know when they're in the little cell trays but look at that that's a good one now what you'll find is that this one in there like that will grow all over this side they always uh, they're more of a spready sort of plant where the begonia is more of an upright as you can see like you can see its tendency to go sideways it doesn't want to come out oh it does that's well rooted like. do the same again like. and we'll just lean it forward a little bit and press it in that's it we'll top all the compost up when we finish that's fine now the bakupa i'm going to plant at the sides but instead of just let me get that off because that don't look very good that bit that's better there you go now instead of planting it like that to let it grow i'm going to plant it that way around so it runs right through the pot so it will come out in all different places and really cover this then so we'll do it here plenty of room in there look. get it in and then feed it through these can get to, oh, 12, 14 inches easy on these runners. So, and wherever they touch the compost, they will root down as well. So that go through. We'll do the same on the other side, not just here. Where we put it? Beyond the impatient. So we'll balance it with this one. Just move that round a little bit. Tons of room in there. Just check the plant, make sure it's all right. A bit there wants to come off. And there. As I say, we'll put it in like that. That one, I'm not happy with. Let's take that off. That's better. We'll put it in like that so it runs through. And then we'll top the compost up. Give it to water and the job's done. I'll just tidy it up. That's it now. I've topped all the compost up inside and made a bit of a mess, but the, the water in will settle all that down. And that's it, ready to go in the courtyard. Now we're going to do another one because it is a pair. So we'll drop this one down carefully and then do the second one. Quite a big fuchsia in the back. It's pretty. Double. I don't know the name. Um, I think what we do is if we like the fuchsia we keep the plant and so names tend to get left behind. I'm going to get on with this and let you see the finished. A bit dry that one, oh, it'll be fine. It's basically the same as the one we've just done. Just keep your eye on for then these. There you go. Remember we put two of those in because it's got a wall at the back. Right, I've put those two in the back and now we'll put the three geraniums in. We'll put the two side ones in first, look. Overwintered again. Nice plants. And then we'll back that right up to that fuchsia. Make right, sure so it's all packed in tight. And this one, this is a bought in one, so it's not ours. Again, one we like the colour. And that will go nicely in there, look. 
third one going in there. It's one of ours again. And that'll go nicely in the front, like that. Pack them in tight. And now we just need the two ivy leaf to finish it. And the Bacupa begonia and impatiens to finish. There you go. Nice find of bow ready for potting now. Again, let it fall forward, it'll be fine. And this one in here. There's no real set pattern to them, just as long as you get everything in so it's leaning forward. That'll be fine. Now I have two begonias in there. Uh, the begonia, remember this will grow more upright. These pots are not very good. Make some room for it, plenty of room in there. And in it goes. Just that's it. I'm happy with that, that's in there. And I'll put the impatient here while I'm here, which will be in there. This time Dye's going for the orangey one. There you go. Remember these will tend, the impatience will tend to spread over. That's that done. Put the big only in the bank. There it is. Compost dropping everywhere, never mind. There you go. And in front of that, to balance that one, we'll have that other impatient there. Look. Bit of dead on the bottom, always keep your eye on, on them. The, if the leaf's got some rot on, get it off. And that can go in there nicely, look. That can go in there. Now, we'll just bring that one forward a little. There you go. Now the Bacupa, I'll just get rid of some pots. Bacupa, same again. Put it so it's facing inward, so it goes through. And then just push these through. Remember where, where they touch the compost, they'll root. So if you can set them off touching the compost, you'll have a huge plant in a few weeks. I'll put this other one just there now. Just check it for... It's very wet. That way, not with those running in. And then just feed them in. They'll find their own way out once you push them in. And then we'll just top the compost up. That's the two planters done now. Quite a few plants in it, but if you think they're going to be like that all summer, we will feed them, we'll water them. Then at the end of the year, except for the impatience and begonias, everything else will be kept through for another year. That's pear planters done. It's a dry, it's nice and dry out there, so we'll pop down the garden and I'll show you what I've been up to between showers this week. Now we've come down the garden, we're sticking to paths today because it's still very, very wet. Now I have managed to put the pea and bean frame up and got the nets on and we've got quite a few of the peas in, we've still got some to put in. What I need to do now is these that have fallen over I need to put some twiggy sticks in 
to hold them up I can save some twiggy sticks where I can just go along there's two places where they're falling but if your peas fall over they don't crop so well so we need to get those up to get them growing potatoes are coming up nicely now they're coming up sporadic there's no set pattern yet but they won't be long and then I'll come in I'll probably put some feed on and hoe them up again ridge them to tidy them up people keep asking me what I use to hold these nets etc down uh, this was the last one I bought the hard ground pegs there's 20 in there and this one was from Audi so not hugely expensive but they're not always this sort of shape there's all different shapes and sizes but they're about the same length and some have rough pieces on so they're holding the ground but that was the last one I bought normally if I haven't got any pegs I get some strong wire and just bend it u-shaped and push that in there's always there's always a way around it if you haven't got your pegs you can see how wet it is in there that was a puddle this morning when I came down so really the best thing to do is to leave it and let it settle the garlic is doing very very well we gave it that little bit of dried blood to give it a nitrogen shot and it seems to be working quite well now I started planting the celery out but the rain stopped play so I had to just leave the rest and abandon them for a bit we'll give it 24 hours let it drain and then we'll start again the only good thing about it is you don't have to water things in this week because there's that much rain coming down what I've done is I've planted half the celery a little bit tight on so we can cut them as young celery and this end I'll put a bit more space in so they can get a little bit stronger so we can harvest them autumn this is the onion plot as you can see they're really biting down now and really getting going we need them to grow as fast as possible so we've got nice big plants for on the longest day when they stop growing this is where I planted the carrots and I'm afraid it's another disaster I just cannot grow carrots on this piece of land at all although I do see an odd one or two coming up but not as it should be the plot behind us which is this one will be for all the tomatoes will go in there if there's any left we'll plant them at the front of the bed where we're going to put the squashes and the pumpkins there might be a little bit room at the front so if there's a few left over we'll put them in there this is the brussels they're doing well i had to put some slug pellets in they're organic ones but the is it the amount of wet we've been having the slugs are having a field day this is the beetroot plot the first rows are the ones that we planted that we grew in the greenhouse likewise those and um, the two black lines that you can see they was seed put in and they're all in little clumps so we can take those as baby beet now we've had that much wind and driving rain i had to put a cover on this one where I put the young plants in but I'll show you what I've got in there it is not a lot but we've got the spring onions at three rows at this end then we've got that row of salad leeks what the leeks but you harvest them as baby leeks two rows of radishes two rows of turnip they're the white ones snowball don't need a lot of those and the first row of the lettuce i shall keep going with the lettuce as soon as that starts to grow we'll set the next this plot here i haven't done a lot to it but this is where the 
sweet corn will live just here it's not quite ready in the greenhouse but we'll put that in there I have dug it and put some barley straw in it just to break it a little bit but I haven't got it it wants a good hoeing and then it'll be fine the raw beans have been loving this cold weather they're actually coming into flower now so they won't be long when they get a little bit bigger and touch the net we'll take it off these are the mini coal cabbages we put in last time as you can see the slugs have been at them so I have put some of those pellets in cauliflowers at that end everything seems to be rooting down well with the rain so it's there is some good news to it this I put in yesterday between showers that's calibrese and then at that end there is some Chinese cabbage for the salads the rhubarb is doing so well that will be the next harvest will be the rhubarb it's a pity we just need a little bit of sun on it just to redden the stalks a bit potatoes in the pots are doing well they could really do now with a little bit more compost in the tops but I'll sort that out mint always doing well right we're in the greenhouse there's the cocoa de pampol thank you very much benny they're all doing well i think every one has germinated with the looks of it need a little bit of water i'll have to get down here everything else in the greenhouse is doing well the tomatoes are now all ready so this week we must get those tomatoes into that plot up there. I'll just show you these. Benny, these are the purple potted peas he sent. I'll have to find room out there for these. They, they'll soon be at the door before me. Now, that'll be it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And let's hope the weather's a little bit better next week. But then again, I don't want it too hot. I'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye now.